Has a leader ever kept their word after assuming office? They are adored by politicians. Words flow freely like honey, alluring and pleasant, but all too frequently hollow. Leaders everywhere come to power on a tsunami of promises. Pledges to rebuild economies, help the oppressed, and create a more promising future. But after they take the throne, how many presidents actually live up to these lofty promises? The majority of the time, the answer is a clear few. But in Burkina Faso, an entirely other thing is taking place. President Ibrahim Trollhori is creating more than just history here. He is reworking the guidelines for possible African governance. Imperialist spirits may, of course, attempt to distract you from your goal. But pay attention, strive for great distances. Consider your options and make a plan. His audacious intentions have shocked not just his country, but the entire continent of Africa as well. Captain Ibrahim Trohori of Burkina Faso stated that in order to establish the companies they intended to set up, they had launched the APIC initiative. He emphasized that it was unthinkable for them to grow tomatoes locally and still import tomato paste. What is Trohori up to then? And why has it sent shockwaves across the West? Let's investigate. Burkina Faso, which is frequently eclipsed by its more well-known neighbors, is becoming known throughout Africa as a hub of development thanks to a number of groundbreaking programs that have the potential to completely change the country. These are the blueprints for a revolution, not merely for changes. A revolution that might completely alter Africa's future. Through the implementation of free healthcare services, investment in nuclear energy, infrastructure renovation, and cultural heritage revitalization, the government is making calculated decisions that have the potential to redefine development standards throughout the continent. However, what are the ramifications of these large-scale projects for the people of Burkina Faso and Africa as a whole? First, and maybe most dramatically, all Burkina-based citizens now have access to free healthcare. An audacious pledge, indeed. However, what does Burkina Faso stand to gain from free healthcare? And more importantly, can't be maintained. The government of Burkina Faso has announced an ambitious plan to use mobile clinics to offer free healthcare services to all of its inhabitants. The goal of this July 25th campaign is to reach every corner of the nation, from the busiest metropolises to the most isolated and neglected villages. Fundamentally, this strategy represents a change in the way the government approaches public health, viewing healthcare as a basic human right rather than a commodity. The Free Healthcare Initiative aims to address some of the most important health problems that Burkina Bay women confront by offering basic services, including mammography and testing for precancerous cervical lesions. This goes beyond healthcare alone. It is about providing healthcare to everyone, especially to those who have historically been ignored by the system and live in remote places. The government's strategy is in line with a more comprehensive understanding of health fairness, which views access to healthcare as a right rather than a privilege. But like with any big project, a number of things will need to come together for this healthcare program to succeed, such finance, coordinating logistics, and the ability of the medical staff. In order for these mobile clinics to deliver high-quality care, the government must make sure they are well-stocked and manned by qualified medical personnel. Furthermore, to make sure that healthcare services are efficiently provided and satisfy the needs of the community, ongoing monitoring and assessment are required. Critics from the West contend that, considering the logistical difficulties and the nation's limited resources, the plan is unduly ambitious. A major problem is deploying mobile clinics over various, sometimes inhospitable terrain. Furthermore, continuous financing is needed to maintain these services throughout time, which could put a load on the national budget. However, Burkina Faso says, 
watch us, in response to those who doubt its potential. They contend that this program aims to invest in human capital, create a healthy country, and lessen the burden of preventable diseases in addition to provide services. Proponents of the program consider it an essential step in creating a society that is more equal. If this initiative is successful, it may be used as a template by other African countries that are facing comparable problems with healthcare access. It is potentially a major investment in human capital that might lead to better health outcomes, longer life expectancies, and eventually economic prosperity. However, the idea goes beyond medicine. Add your voice to the total liberation of Africa by leaving a comment in the comments section below. Do not forget like and subscribe for more informative videos like this one. Let's proceed. President Trohori is aware that significant and far-reaching change is necessary for it to become ingrained. His administration is well aware that there are other factors to consider besides health. In addition, Burkina Faso needs to focus on energy independence, economic diversification, and cultural renewal if it is to genuinely improve its citizens and provide a model for the rest of Africa. Burkina Faso's current trajectory is so intriguing and poses such a danger to established power structures because of its multifaceted approach. Burkina Faso is in the news for reasons other than healthcare, its audacious venture into nuclear energy. Burkina Faso made a daring, if not contentious, choice to place its faith on nuclear energy on a continent where power outages are as regular as sunshine. Burkina Faso is taking a daring step toward energy independence by looking to nuclear energy to help with its ongoing power outages. In 2023, at the Russia-Africa Summit, the authorities of the nation declared their intention to work with Rosatom in Russia to construct a nuclear power plant. However, what does this mean for the future of Burkina Faso, and why has the country chosen to seek nuclear energy? Burkina Faso has a great chance to become energy independent, lessen its need on imported fossil fuels, and provide a steady power supply to boost its expanding economy through the use of nuclear energy. The government has demonstrated its dedication to this goal with the creation of the National Atomic Energy Agency. This organization is in charge of organizing all initiatives pertaining to the development of nuclear energy, making sure that the potential advantages go beyond the production of electricity and include improvements in research, industry, and health. But choosing to use nuclear energy is not without its difficulties. Nuclear generating facilities are costly to construct and operate. And for them to run safely, a considerable degree of technical know-how and regulatory supervision are needed. Concerns exist over the proper disposal of radioactive waste as well as the possible dangers of nuclear mishaps. Global memory is still plagued by the ghosts of Chernobyl and Fukushima, which begs the issue of whether Burkina Faso, a developing country, is ready to face such hazards. But this is a calculated risk, according to President Trohore. Investing in nuclear energy is a calculated move toward diversifying the nation's energy sources and developing a more durable and sustainable energy infrastructure. Burkina Faso wants to power its industry, raise living standards, and become more economically competitive by assuring a steady and secure energy supply. If Burkina Faso is successful, other African countries may find it easier to investigate other energy sources. Escaping the continent's recurring patterns of energy reliance and blackouts. Often written off as too expensive or risky for Africa, nuclear energy may prove to be a practical solution, literally and symbolically tipping the scales in favor of Africa. Will more African countries follow suit, and what response will the West give to an Africa that dare to use atomic power? Burkina Faso's decision to align itself with Russia, a country that has been progressively presenting itself as a substitute ally for African nations, also conveys a powerful message. It denotes a break from long-standing Western partners who have firmly controlled African economic and energy policies. This shift to nuclear power for energy self-sufficiency has the potential to reshape economic ties and alliances throughout the continent. 
It might usher in a new period in which African countries take greater ownership of their resources and futures. Additionally, African countries will not alter their agenda, regardless of how the West responds. Although energy and healthcare receive much of the media attention, the nation is also investing heavily on regional infrastructure, especially in the train sector. The government has declared its intention to construct a facility in Bobo Dio Lafo, where it will produce and install rail tracks, construct train cars, and refine steel scrap. This endeavor is a calculated step towards stimulating internal economic growth, not only an attempt to enhance transportation. Burkina Faso hopes to lessen its reliance on imports, generate jobs, and boost regional economic activity by producing goods locally. Since the nation will no longer need to spend a lot of money importing rail parts, the initiative is anticipated to result in major cost savings. Additionally, both skilled and unskilled workers will have employment prospects thanks to this program. Promoting an economy that is more inclusive and benefits all Burkina Bays. Infrastructure spending is essential to Burkina Faso's overall development plan. Effective transportation systems are essential to national trade, commerce, and economic integration. Burkina Faso is establishing itself as a key center in the area and boosting connectivity and competitiveness by developing these networks. Providing a dependable and economical way to move people and goods across the country, the rail sector in particular has the potential to drastically alter the economic landscape of the nation. This vision is regional in nature as well as national. Burkina Faso's effective rail system might connect landlocked nations to coastal ports, promoting trade and West African economic integration. This is a strong declaration of intent, indicating that Burkina Faso is prepared to take the lead in shaping the future of the region's economy. Although energy, infrastructure, and healthcare predominate in conversations, in Burkina Faso, a quiet revolution blending creativity, culture, and economic opportunity is taking place. Burkina Faso is adopting an alternative strategy in a global economy that frequently places a higher priority on industrial progress than cultural assets. Across the nation, the government is making significant investments to support the rebirth of craft communities. It is intended for these craft villages to serve as hubs of both economic activity and creativity, giving craftspeople a stage on which to display their abilities and boost the economy. However, what part do these handicraft villages play in Burkina Faso's development plan, and what wider implications do they have for the future of the nation? Supporting regional artists, maintaining traditional crafts, and generating income in areas that were previously neglected are the goals of the Craft Villages Initiative. Through the creation of craft communities across the nation, Burkina Faso is encouraging sustainable economic development in addition to protecting its unique cultural legacy. To ensure inclusivity in economic development, the government intends to establish specialized craft facilities, including those that serve those with disabilities. These artisan communities are more than just places to visit. They are essential elements of a well-rounded economy. Through the development of a thriving craft industry, Burkina Faso is opening up new job and economic opportunities, particularly for young people and women who frequently rule the craft industry. Additionally, the program seeks to increase Burkina Bay Craft's visibility and marketability on a national and worldwide scale opening up new markets and growth prospects for craftsmen. Additionally, the craft villages are vital hubs for creativity and innovation. By giving craftspeople access to tools, instruction, and assistance, a culture of invention that can propel wider economic development is being fostered by the government. With the ability to generate jobs, revenue, and reduce poverty, the craft industry might play a major role in propelling economic growth. Burkina Faso is proactively arranging itself for a successful and sustainable future, not merely haphazardly moving forward. A new phase of national development is heralded by the large-scale projects in the fields of energy, 
infrastructure, healthcare, and culture. However, what does Burkina Faso's future hold, and what may other African countries take up from its model? The ability of the government to maintain momentum, allocate resources effectively, and negotiate the difficulties posed by rapid development will be crucial to the success of these programs. If Burkina Faso is successful, it may serve as an example for other African countries, showing how a combination of ambition, calculated preparation, and dedication to the people can bring about significant change. Burkina Faso's strategy is noteworthy for its inclusivity and comprehensiveness. The government is investing in many sectors, rather than concentrating on just one, in order to create a more resilient and diversified economy. This all-encompassing approach guarantees that the advantages of development are distributed fairly and widely, promoting social cohesion and national unity. Additionally, Burkina Faso's dedication to sustainable development and self-reliance sets a good example for other African countries. Burkina Faso is showing that African countries can construct their own routes to wealth without depending on outside help by seizing control of their resources making investments in regional industries, and placing a high priority on the welfare of their people. This move towards independence is a political, as well as an economic tactic. It stands for a rejection of the post-independence neo-colonial dependency that have typified most of Africa's history. Burkina Faso's decision to shape its own destiny is a strong statement. This is Africa's moment. The path ahead won't be without difficulties though. Burkina Faso needs to keep spending money on infrastructure, healthcare, and education if it wants to make sure that the long-term advantages of growth remain. Safety and sustainability must continue to be the government's primary goals as it manages the risks related to nuclear energy and other complicated initiatives. Leadership under President Trollhori is distinguished by a special blend of vision tenacity, and a strong sense of loyalty to his people. In contrast to many politicians who talk the talk, but don't do the walking, Trollhori is changing his country physically. His approach to leadership is unabashedly audacious. Questioning the status quo and standing your ground against constraints imposed by the past or outside expectations. His actions have not only elevated him to a position of hope in Burkina Faso, but have also made him a representation of what happens when a leader puts the needs of the people before the interests of a select few. It's indicative that the West feels uneasy under his leadership. It implies that the current system is in danger because of Trohori's style of government, which is based on African ideals of community, resiliency, and self-determination. Burkina Faso is carrying the hopes of a continent ready to design its path toward wealth and independence with it as it moves forward. Burkina Faso is paving the road for a promising future. Burkina Faso is demonstrating that even the most audacious aspirations may come true when accompanied by vision, tenacity, and a dedication to its people. The nation's latest endeavors go beyond mere regulations. They embody the spirit of a country that is determined to rise. Burkina Faso's success story is one of tenacity and success, and the world ought to take note as the country continues to redefine what is possible in Africa. The direction that Burkina Faso is currently taking under President Trohori is a blatant sign that change is coming to Africa. The nation's daring initiatives in infrastructure, nuclear energy, healthcare, and cultural renewal are raising the bar for what other African countries can do when they put their citizens' needs and aspirations ahead of outside pressures. The obstacles are formidable, and the stakes are enormous. However, as long as Burkina Faso keeps going in this direction, other African countries hoping to escape the shackles of dependency and steer clear of it can use it as a model to become prosperous and independent. Africa is observing, and the world is paying attention. Will other African leaders be brave enough to take a cue from Trohore? Will they have the courage to dream big and take decisive action? Time will tell. However, one thing is for sure. Africa holds the key to its destiny.
and visionaries such as Trollhori are pointing the way. Do you believe that Trollhori's choices will permanently alter Burkina Faso? Was this the reason Trollhori managed to hold on to power in spite of all the odds? People keep wondering why the West rejects his leadership. What do you think Burkina Faso will accomplish under Trohora's leadership? We explore the rich history, culture, and the ongoing struggle for sovereignty in Africa. Join us in this important conversation by subscribing to our channel. By subscribing, you're not just staying informed, you're becoming part of a movement dedicated to reclaiming Africa's rightful place on the global stage. Hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you never miss an episode. Let's work together to spread knowledge and inspire change. Thanks for watching.